Maria Gomez. I'm 51 years old and I studied agricultural technology. I teach little kids how to horseback ride and I'm also dedicated to providing therapy and rehabilitation through the use of horses or equine therapy. Equine therapy, as its name states, is therapy through the use of horses. The horse is really the one capable of benefiting others. Those therapeutic capabilities are basically three, which are the transmission of a walking pattern, transmission of body heat, and the transmission of rhythmic impulse at the pelvic girdle level. With the transmission of a walking pattern, the horse moves diagonally or parallelly. The horse that move parallelly are not right for this type of therapy. Those that move diagonally are suitable because their movement mimics the walk of human beings. For the transmission of rhythmic impulse at the pelvic girdle level, it is important to be aligned appropriately both for therapist and patient. If there isn't a perfect alignment, if both the horse's and the patient's centers don't match, then those rhythmic impulses are not being transmitted, are not entering the marrow or the spine or the brain in order to stimulate the area of balance and coordination. With the transmission of body heat, the horse's temperature is around 1.5 degrees warmer than that of the human beings. And so when the horse is in movement, the patient is in movement with it, and there is a release of heat that is similar to the warm compresses often applied at a doctor's office or at a therapy session, and that helps a lot to relax. What is being worked through the horse are the patient's motor skills because the horse is a motor pattern. Everything is in movement and so there is an effect at the neuromotor level, at the sensory motor level, at the psychomotor level, at the sociomotor level, and at the body's functioning level. So what happens with these motor patterns? When you are born, you haven't learned any motor patterns. As you start trying things, you can't breathe or eat or walk or talk. All those are motor patterns. When you start to do them, the brain starts recording those movements in order to do them. You start learning through repetition. The walking pattern that the horse is transmitting is helping patients who've been unable to record that skill and have difficulty walking. Regardless of whether they have high or low muscle tone, they have an injury that is preventing them to walk. Therefore, the patient rides the horse properly aligned and centered, and the pattern that the horse does is recorded by the person's brain. That's why it works. I started 20 years ago, in the year 96. A very good horse academy here in Antioquia wanted to bring horses from Argentina in order to start working with little kids, and that way planting the seed to start planning for the future. Why bring this from Argentina? The whole world teaches kids to start riding with ponies and small horses. That idea came to Colombia so kids could start more at their level. The person who brought the horses from Argentina told me that over there, horses worked with kids that had Down syndrome and autism that I should try it too. So looking through people I knew, I started out with three or four kids, each one with a different diagnosis. One had cerebral palsy, one had autism, and the other Down syndrome. And so I started to work with them from a playful perspective. And with the help of my daughter's pediatrician and a neurologist that I knew, I inquired what I had to do to avoid any injury, and they assessed me, and they told me to work with the kids using play. 
For example, Tatan's mother, he was the one with cerebral palsy, used to tell me that as soon as Tatan started writing, he started to express everything that had been done throughout his life. He was about 15, and he never expressed himself or showed any interest for anything. And after writing, he started to express everything we did, so his mother told everyone. And that's how many kids started to arrive. Until in 2000, I met a person who came from Mexico who had trained with Eddie Groff, a German woman very well versed in equine therapy. Germany is very strong in that area. They are pioneers in equine therapy. So I made the connection and went to Mexico where I took the courses with her. And afterwards, she began coming here, either to Bogota or here to Medellin. The idea is to bring her every year or every year and a half in order to keep training and working together, in order to keep getting stronger. The most common pathologies we work with here are Down syndrome, autism, cerebral palsy, and with disorders linked to convulsions. We also work with multiple sclerosis and with attention deficit. What happens? Within all these pathologies, and more or less when starting the therapy, you have to understand if this pathology affects physical and motor skills or if the affliction is mental. Therefore, depending on which you guide the therapy, whether to focus it on passive hippotherapy, active hippotherapy, or on therapeutic writing. It has affected me emotionally. When I started working with children with oncological problems, cancer, from Las Americas Foundation, one of the girls died. We had just started with her, and 15 or 20 days later she died. That was very hard for us, a difficult process. We wanted to give up. The whole team said we couldn't do this. We talked to the doctors from Las Americas, and they told us that what we did was really good work. And for them, it became about two things. One, whether a person had this opportunity, and second, whether a person didn't have it. Those who came here, life seemed more beautiful and having cancer mattered less and chemotherapy mattered less. They didn't care. That's when I realized I had to get over it. I'm very committed to this emotionally. There are two or three people that have me especially involved, Gilberto, Diana Carolina, and Alejandra. Because when they came, their diagnosis was that they had many physical problems, sensorial disintegration, and that it would be progressive. That was the diagnosis. Then they came and what we saw was the opposite, that it hasn't advanced, and instead they have acquired many abilities that we never imagined they could have. My name is Gilberto León Urán. I used to be a truck driver, but with time, symptoms began to appear and they detected a cancerous tumor. It was in my skull. The tumor was in a very bad spot, between the brain and the cerebellum. And so it was very badly placed. And the surgeon took out only half of it. And the other half, with chemo and with a little help from God, the tumor disappeared. Gilberto, my son, was very quick-witted since he was little, studious, and afterwards a hard worker. 
He liked to work, stay away from vices and from the things he didn't like, a straight arrow. He began driving cars. He drove a truck, dump truck, taxi, but didn't pick anyone up, not even his mom, because he got robbed three times in one month. Apart from that, normal, good, manageable. There were things, how can I say, that affected my health because I was practically a vegetable. Everything had to be done for me. Bathing, eating, dressing, shaving, cutting my nails. Those were the things, how can I say, I was, how do you say, a person who depended on others. Gilberto started off not being able to control his upper body, and Gilberto has an ataxic gait. In other words, his feet are placed wide apart, and that is because his equilibrium has been altered greatly. Therefore, Gilberto, when riding, used to go everywhere, and you had to sustain him everywhere. It was hard in the beginning because I felt very frustrated because I was used to doing everything for myself. Perhaps in this condition, I felt very bad because everything was done for me. I couldn't do anything for myself. That was the hardest. But thanks to the therapies and the recovery I've had, nothing is hard anymore. Some doctors don't like equine therapy. There are others that do like it. Those who don't say that it's just like playing with Play-Doh. They don't like anything alternative to medicine. But the doctors that I'm in contact with, three neurologists, some specializing in adults, others in pediatry, one would say to me, listen, I will be blunt, the kids that do equine therapy, who are in critical condition, going through chemotherapy, going through everything, come into my office laughing, possessing all these skills, and their family is happy. Kids who don't have the chance are sad kids, who feel that their lives are over when going through chemo. Aleja came here with hemiparesis, a side effect from a very strong tumor she had. The pathology, which turned out to be a cancerous tumor, was already very advanced, whereupon she reacted and then had to go through 36 sessions of radiotherapy. Afterwards, she went through six months of chemo, and that's it. But she came out of the clinic in a wheelchair, and she's always been a strong woman since coming out. So she said, no, I'm not staying in a wheelchair. And tough as she is, she started standing up. She even fell down the first time she left the clinic. She fell, she busts open her head because she said, I have to walk. And that's how she started. And that's how she started to walk. She lasted around 20 days in the wheelchair, a tough girl, forging ahead. When she was little, she never got sick. She was always healthy. I was the sick one. She was a model. She participated in several beauty pageants representing Antioquia. And at the Miss Solidarity pageant, around the time of the Flower Festival, she participated and was one of the finalists. 
When Aleja came here, she came with her entire family and she was very protected. To place her on the horse was difficult. She had to be accompanied and supported, not just by the therapist who was on the horse, but from below, because she had no balance. The other thing about Aleja is that she used to be an artistic skater. And so for her, it was very hard to not be able to skate again. That was very hard for her. So much so that after a year or two of being with us, one of the physiotherapists got a hold of some skates and put them on her, and she felt extremely happy. She can't skate again like she used to, but at least she could see that she can develop her skills, and that has helped to push her even further. It's been hard, of course, in the beginning. My older sister, and I was just a kid, supposedly, and she's in this situation. My mom had to leave her job. It was just my dad. And so as an 18-year-old kid, I had to assume this big responsibility with them, both with work as well as in taking care of her. So we would take turns. Our family is very small. We all had to change everything. We had to take care of one another. That has been the change. I think that when a parent or a family member has a serious disease such as this one, they see they can do things. I think trust generates a lot of possibilities. Because when someone is convinced that their child can't do anything, they don't let them do anything. But when you start to see that they can do it and actually handle a horse and understand instruction, then I believe that everyone around them starts to believe in them. And it's not just with the horse, but everywhere they go. Because now everyone knows they can do things. So it's also about strengthening the trust, confidence, self-esteem, and not just the patients, but the entire family surrounding them. Because it's common to see a disabled person's family to get stuck in the past, not advanced due to sadness, love, pain. They don't let people evolve, so they just continue. I mean, they cut the process without letting them evolve. And when they come here and see them do all these things, everyone starts to believe in them and doors start opening. It comes from there. My greatest satisfaction here, there's been so many that, well, I can tell you. I had a boy around five or six years ago, Santiago Bernal. He was sent to me by a physiatrist who wrote on the order, this kid has everything to walk. He's been given everything to walk and doesn't. Since I don't believe everything you do with these therapies, I want you to teach me and show me what it is that you do. After six months, he was walking. That was a big thing, very big. I think his brain simply recorded the horse's walking pattern and add to that coordination and balance. When they joined, their diagnosis stated that they suffered from motor function, that it was also progressive and that there would be sensory disintegration. From here, we began our work. They started to write accompanied. They had no control of their posture, absolutely no control of their upper body. When we put them on the horse, they would go forwards, backwards, sideways. They had to ride with someone. Here, they have done the whole process. Gilberto joined in the year 2009 and Alejandra in 2007. In 2008, Aleja had a major setback, and for six months she was incapacitated. She started having many convulsions and convulsions, so we had to stop the equine therapy with her. Gilberto has remained constant, hasn't had a setback. Even now, Aleja is going through chemotherapy again, but I think that the horse has helped so much that many effects from it have been removed. He 
He was telling us the other day and made us laugh a lot that when he used to go out, he'd be unable to ride the bus because they thought he was drunk. It's cool when it's an anecdote because I laugh when I tell it. A few days ago, when they opened the Metro Cable in Santo Domingo, a friend took me to go see it. We took the bus to the center of Prado, and when we were about to go on the platform, they wouldn't sell me the ticket, saying I was drunk, and the girl even called a policeman who was there patrolling, and so he came. The girl told him that they couldn't let me enter because I was drunk. The policeman also had his doubts, and he's right, because a drunk person is very annoying. So the policeman told me to blow into his eye, and then he felt embarrassed. He told the lady, ma'am, he's not drunk, he's sick. And they were embarrassed, both the metro lady and the policeman. He is an incredible person with spirit and very capable who has a lot of faith in God and he gets over things and laughs about them. Imagine then all the effort it takes to try and get on the bus only to be turned back because they think you're drunk when the tumor is the cause. It's excellent, excellent, the work she does. To have good posture on the horse, good posture, that was tough in the beginning. Now, we have a good posture on the horse. That has helped us a lot. I think she is very human, which helps a lot. She transmits a charisma to the patients. It's not just her profession. I think it's not enough to have the knowledge or do the work. It's also about transmitting that and having it reach the patients. Thanks to her, that has given strength to Aleja. Because when she is there, she is happy. When she is there, she is loved. The girl, they call her the girl of that home, because that is like a second home to her. I feel happy, at home as well. Because the improvement given by God has been great, great from what he was like. To ask for more is unfair. And for people who have tried so hard, both our neighbors and at Asdecilla, I can't repay it. For me, one of my most satisfactory moments was the day I saw Gilberto riding in the truck during the transportation fair. To see that happy face was for me the best, the best. With Aleja, I've also felt great satisfactions. When she expresses happiness about being here, when we see that Aleja doesn't have to come with someone, that it's the taxi driver who brings her and that she wants to make it here on her own, that is wonderful. And it's like that again and again. The kids with Down syndrome, you saw the happiness they show when they see you. No, the happiness I feel. Because this fills you with an incredible satisfaction every day. Each day, one could say, okay, I'm done, I can die. I have nothing left to do, nothing left this year. And the next day, another wonderful story happens. Many things happen. Thank you.